Hi, I'm back making another video today trying to walk instructors or potential instructors for spring quarter through the different broadcasting screen sharing options for your course material that Zoom provides. So Annie and I have started to kind of explore the options, started to weigh the pros and cons of different things. Um, I'm in this video, my goal is to just kind of like walk you through different options so you can see what the instructor who's sharing their screen, sharing their course content is going to see when you're projecting your stuff out to your class. The student view is very different. And unfortunately, we haven't yet figured out a way that the instructor can uh, be in charge of the view that everybody sees. So it's kind of up to each individual participant, but we're still working on figuring something out for that. So I, I'm just going to illustrate for you the different ways you can share your content and still see yourself in a video uh, at the same time. And we'll do other videos to, to show you the different options for what participants see. So like later today or later this weekend or sometime when I have people actually in my Zoom room with me, we can show you both sides. Okay, so this is making use of this, the share screen or screen sharing features. So in here, you can, uh, kind of stay on camera with you. Uh, there's basic and advanced versions. We've walked through some of these before in the other videos. For this one, I'm going to use this particular option under basic. So this is, uh, it's showing up as Keynote and then it's giving me the title of the file that I have open. If I had Word open, I would have that option. If I had like Preview or like Adobe or something like that open, it would give me that option. So this is basically a uh, screen sharing option that pops up when you have something other than Zoom active on your computer. If I wanted to share my whole entire desktop instead of just the program where I have like slides, I could do the entire desktop and you might decide you prefer that option, doesn't really matter. Um, obviously students or whoever's in your Zoom room are going to be able to see everything that you've got on your computer unless you've got like your Zoom window kind of taking up all of the screen or like populating and covering different things. So. I personally prefer to share content from within the specific app window instead of sharing everything that's on my uh, desktop with students. And then in a previous video, we talked about how you could use your iPad or your iPhone via AirPlay or via cable if you have it to share content. So if you wanted to show something on a different screen, you could still have your video presented next to that. And then this whiteboard option, some people might have differing success than we have. It is, uh, I'll just show you really quick actually. Um, here, I don't even know if you can see it because this has been the issue in the past, like when we've tested this out before, I've in terrible cursive written my name, Elizabeth. So you might be able to see that, but I think like this is good if you're okay with like click and drag options. Um, for sharing screen, like if there's something that you really want to show people and you don't mind like using your mouse, using your cursor, your trackpad to actually sketch it out in real time, you could use the whiteboard feature, sharing feature for that. Otherwise, if you need more control, if you need a stylus, if you're going to use your finger to draw on something, or you're actually going to write on a whiteboard or whatever, uh, there would be other options like that uh, iPad sharing thing that we showed you. Okay, coming back to the options for screen sharing. Uh, I'll just stick to this for now. So Keynote is what I want to share with my students or you guys who are watching this video. I hit share. Okay, my Keynote stuff's down here. So I can drag it into the frame. <clears throat> and when I first came into this, uh, this option had been clicked. So I had hit in my thumbnail video, but I want to show active speaker, <clears throat> excuse me, because that's me. So I can make that a little bit bigger. And if I wanted to take my keynote or my PowerPoint and put it into presenter mode, presenter view, lecture view, uh, full screen view, whatever it's called, I could do that. So my, my video of me stays on top of my full screen presentation of my content. So that's really important to know. Uh, this is probably something that people are gonna wanna be able to do for teaching in the spring. So I can see my slides. Uh, my students see, you know, all the same stuff that I've got showing to you guys right now on the screen. Uh, I do have a little bit of flexibility with how big I make my image, but not infinite. So it won't go any bigger than this. So it won't go any bigger than like a quarter of the screen. I can put it wherever I want. Okay, I can, you know, obviously drag it, make it whatever size I want. And so if I were really kind of clever in thinking about planning my spring classes, 
I might make all of my slides that I'm going to use in PowerPoint or Keynote uh, set up so that like my content on my slides is never in like the top right corner of the screen or never in the bottom right hand corner of the screen or wherever I want my image to consistently be. And that way I can kind of plan around and have consistency across all the lectures for the students, like especially when I'm recording and uploading for them later. Content will be in the like upper two thirds or whatever. And then like my uh, lecture video, me actually on camera will be down in a particular corner. So you could be really kind of uh, savvy and planning ahead and making sure that like your slides are set up. So there's a spot where you can drag your video over top of if you want to do that. Uh, okay, so I can make my video as big or small as I see fit. There aren't a lot of options for viewing. I already showed you like it's basically like minimize the the Thumbnail, so like there's no video of me. They'd still hear me speaking. You guys can still hear me speaking, but students would still hear me through Zoom. Uh, so I could be talking over something. So let's say I had planned most of my slides to be like that, but not all. I could always hide my thumbnail if my video was getting in the way, if I needed to like do something and uh, kind of call people's attention to different parts of the screen. Okay, I can make that bigger. I'm gonna have to drag it every time. <clears throat> when I have other people in the room, I have other options up here, so Annie and I'll show you guys that later, like all the different ways you can uh, stack or orient, it, orient the thumbnails for various people who are participating video, via video in your Zoom room. And uh, it can go on top like this, or you can pin it so only one person's video typically shows up, which is what we would recommend that you do as instructors. Okay, so uh, this is the only other slide I have in here right now for this example deck. Okay, so this is... Uh, the only content that I want to present to my students. So I would I would do this, I would finish my lecture, and then I would stop sharing. And that takes me out of the presentation mode and back to the normal Zoom mode. So again, if I weren't the only one in here, I would probably have the gallery view or I would see other people or I'd be able to like uh, manage participants. If I had other people, there would be a chat window over here. So if I had, let's say I had just talked for five minutes about something in my class, take a break, come over, check with the TAs, see if there's any questions that students have had about anything that I said, or if anyone wants to ask me anything, uh, take a break to do that kind of thing, then go back and deliver more lecture content. So that would be any of my recommendations that you try to like uh, bin your lecture content into really small chunks, like five, 10 minutes max, and you take breaks and you check in with your students in between, because it's gonna be really hard for students to uh, jump in in the middle of the lecture and ask you questions, even if they have something that comes to mind. Okay, so that's one option for how you could display your video. Another option will be to like show the full screen instead of only showing the Keynote or PowerPoint app screen and having your video float over top of it, but we'll show you that in a different one. So good luck with this and we'll be back uh, soon with more videos.